the first question. Um, during the time you taught at LG, how did you address environmental education? So um, in terms of environmental education, we started this trip called the um, Catalina Island field trip. And it was the kind of the big thing that happened um, in my AP bio class, which I taught for, for since 1989. And it was that particular course where I was able to take kids out into the field and get them to experience in a real way, environmental education. Um, and Another thing that I did was when I was department chair of the science department, I um, asked one of our teachers, our young teachers, uh, Amelia de la Paz, if she would be interested in starting an AP environmental science class. And so that was 2010 was the first year we started uh, an AP environmental science class. And that was awesome because, um, you know, the whole class is environmental science. And she's such a popular teacher. She's such a great teacher that it filled up and she has five sections of um, AP environmental science, which we've, it's been running now for 10, 11 years, which is fantastic. How did you initiate the Catalina trip and how long has it been? So I began teaching, uh, in 1980 in Los Angeles at a little private school and for two years and they that's where I first went to Catalina Island with we went for an entire week actually um, because they believe so strongly in environmental education and then when I came up to Los Gatos High School um, I started in 84 um, and in 1989 I finally started teaching AP Bio and that's when I initiated the AP uh, the Catalina trip and it started out um, very small, just I think 12 kids. And we took a couple of cars down, drove down to LA and um, you know, did the trip. So what is the main focus of the trip and how does it relate to building awareness of climate change? So the main focus of the trip has always been in my mind, uh, to s several fold. First of all, um, number one, I think, the best way for kids to learn is to get out of the classroom. And so whenever I can take kids on field trips, I know that those will be the most memorable things that happened to them in high school. And so um, that was number one, let's get them out of the classroom, let's get them out into the environment. Um, and one of my missions in doing this trip is, um, because I had such a wonderful experience when I took kids down there in my first couple of years teaching, I knew how magical the place was, and I knew that it would allow kids to fall in love with nature, with the environment. And to me, if you can get someone to fall in love with the environment, with nature, um, then you've got an environmentalist for the rest of your life. And so you don't have to specifically teach like climate change, because when I started teaching, when I started taking kids down to um, Catalina Island, even though climate change was an issue, it was not the issue that it is today. It wasn't a big, so it was not really on the horizon, but now it's a big issue. Well, we've taken kids down to Catalina Island for so many years now that we have thousands of kids who are environmentalists. And so even though we didn't specifically teach them about um, climate change, I am sure they are all voting in a way um, and doing things in their lives that will help promote awareness of climate change and best practices in terms of helping our climate. Being a sophomore, I've already heard it from multiple students about the trip. Those who have gone have special memories and others look forward to when they'll be able to go. What makes it so special? Well, I mean, first of all, it's three, it's a three day trip. Um, we, Two classes go AP Bio and AP Environmental Science, and probably about 60% of each of those classes go. And we take two airplanes because there's so many people now. We have to fly two airplanes down. And 
this whole weekend is just a bonding experience with all these different kids because you have ju juniors and seniors, you have AP Bio and AP Environmental Science, and we mix everything up so it just becomes a very inclusive family atmosphere. And we really encourage you know, juniors to mix with seniors and AP Bio to mix with, mix with environmental, AP Environmental Science. Um, you know, there's the dorms, they get to live in the dorms, which is really cool. We all eat together in a dining room. Um, the instructors are just fantastic. They're super enthusiastic. And we do so many things. It's like at the end of the week, weekend, you, you can't imagine you've only been there for three days. It feels like you've been there for like two weeks because we've done so many amazing different things. Um, so to say any one special thing, it's hard to say, but it's the whole experience is, I would, I would say it's magical. And then we were wondering, uh, how many students do you think you've taken to, on the trip over the years? You know, it's hard to say. Um, I'd have to sit down and calculate it. Like I said, I think the first year, I took about 12 kids from AP Bio. I think I had one AP Bio class that year. That was my very first year of teaching AP Bio. I think I took 12 kids in a couple cars. And then it just kept growing and growing and growing as AP Bio. I got more AP Bio sections. And then Amelia, uh, you know, she, we take her kids down. So m most recently, we're taking around somewhere between a, around 130 to 140 kids every year now. And um, you just multiply that by, well, we've been doing that for almost 10 or 11 years because the two classes combined. And then before that, maybe half the amount. So, you know, certainly we've taken uh, at least, a, you know, over a thousand, you know, several thousand kids maybe. And I would say to you guys, you, you know, things can begin like a little mustard seed and then they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And you have no idea. I had no idea that my first year of teaching in 1980, and I went with this little private school down to this, you know, place on Catalina Island, that someday I would be leading a, almost 140 kids every year down to this place um, with, you know, it's just, it's amazing. And it has had such an impact on so many kids. I mean, like one of my students, for instance, um, one, of my, one of my very first students I had, she ended up working at the Children's Discovery Museum and started a program which is called BioSight, where you bring fourth graders and have the high school teachers teach the fourth graders um, stream ecology. I knew that she was doing this. Um, and of course, she was inspired to go into environmental science because of the Catalina trip. And then when we started AP Environmental Science, I asked Mrs. De La Paz, would you like to meet my friend? And she said, absolutely. And so that year she started a biocide program at Los Gas High School. So we've been doing that now since 2010, uh, bringing in fourth graders. And now those fourth graders are now high school students. Uh, so, and they're teaching fourth graders as well. So there's another piece, you know, that this, it's just amazing what you can do. You start out small and um, you never know, you know, they say a teacher never knows where their influence will stop. And I believe that's really true. And um, this, this, I just gave you a little example of, you know, how that, how that works. Can I read a quote to you? Yes, please. Yeah, so this is a quote. Um, you may know Rachel um, Carson is a, um, and she was really the one that started the environmental movement. Back in the late 50s, early 60s, she wrote a book called Silent Spring, super famous. And she has this wonderful quote I just want to read to you. I um, mean, this is kind of an inspiration for you ask, you know, why do you take this trip to Catalina Island? And this is one of the reasons. She said, if a child is to keep alive his inborn sense of wonder, he needs the companionship of at least one adult who can share it rediscovering with him the joy, excitement, and mystery of the world we live in. And that's a quote from Rachel Carson. And I just think it really explains what I was doing when I was teaching and what Amelia, Kathy Messenger, Jim Bryant are now doing as they continue this trip into the future.